The way we make things is changing, radically. A new set of ideas and trends have emerged and combined to create a new industrial revolution, one led by people and human innovation. They're using ideas like collaborative design teams and leaner, more customizable manufacturing. Once upon a time, a factory made one thing. Now, a factory can make almost as many things as there are people to imagine them. From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. A year after first breaking ground on the 238-bed 8th Theatre Nelson Mandela Children's Hospital in Parktown, the Nelson Mandela Children's Hospital Trust, or NMCHT, continues to advance construction of the legacy project with a view to admitting its first young patient in the first half of next year. Natalie Grieve attended a recent tour of the development to check up on its progress. Located on land gifted by the University of the Witwatersrand's education campus and lying adjacent to the Witz Medical School and the Charlotte Makeke Johannesburg Academic Hospital, the paediatric facility would, once completed, become the fifth facility of its kind on the continent and only the second in South Africa, alongside the Red Cross Children's Hospital in Cape Town. In line with government's modernization of tertiary services plan, the hospital would house several speciality centers, including a hematology and oncology unit, a cardiology and cardiothoracic surgery, a neurosciences unit, a renal unit, a pulmonology unit, a craniofacial unit, and a general pediatric surgery unit. Once operational, it would also serve as a pediatric and medical training facility. While not a Green Star South Africa rated project, primary contractor Group 5 said it had complied with all local regulations regarding energy efficiency when modelling and designing the hospital's heating, ventilation and air conditioning system. Group 5 building MD Tim Nichols told Engineering News Online during a tour of the site earlier this month that the hospital would be structurally complete by the end of the year, before being commissioned in the first few months of next year. Well, basically after we inherited the site um, from a bulk earthworks platform level, we've um, managed to do the piling and pretty much seen our way out of the structure phase of the job in terms of um, the concrete formwork and reinforcement and into the finishes. Um, as you've seen, you've been to one of the theatres, you can see it's quite well progressed in terms of the, the internal finishes themselves. And uh, basically now uh, going into the finishing phase of the contract where uh, we're targeting end of this year to be finished. And then early in the new year for the commissioning process to start. Any operational costs that were related to the care of public patients would be funded by the Department of Health, while private patients would be funded by medical aid funds and patients from the Southern African Development Community through the provision of bilateral agreements. NMCHF trustee and project lead Jose Olani told journalists during the tour that he hoped the establishment of the hospital, which could be expanded to an up to 300-bed facility within five years, would serve as a catalyst for the development of pediatric facilities elsewhere in the region. We I think this would be able to start activating even either within this country and even in the surrounding countries to have a similar hospital if let's say we hit the more than 300 beds because then it means the demand is just so high. So this is just a um, pathfinder to something that has been ignored all along. NMCHT CEO Bongi Makabela added that an expansion of healthcare facilities for children in Africa would engender the living legacy of former statesman Nelson Mandela, enabling each child that passed through its doors to experience the spirit of the struggle icon. The project is an important project because when, before Nelson Mandela passed away, the last three years of his life, he spent it mostly wanting to work on this children's hospital. You know, there was a time when he was very sick and I'd visited him in Kunu and he was saying, how far are we with the children's hospital? And I said, well, we're, we're trying to raise funds, we're struggling to raise funds. And he's saying, you must bring a few business people around my dinner table and I will tell them why it's important to do this. You know, so it's something we feel very strongly as his legacy, but it's, a, it's also an important legacy because it wasn't about celebrating him. It was about celebrating our children and it was about ensuring that there is continuity, almost sustainability of the nation 
by taking care of the children. Other news making headlines this week, yet another use for South Africa's LODOC scanner. And the Department of Telecommunications and Postal Services allocates 200 million rand for the first phase of the broadband rollout. Within a decade, conventional invasive autopsies may be a rarity, with pathologists instead using imaging technologies to conduct virtual post-mortems. Such an advance will be welcome in busy morgues in resource-poor countries like South Africa. LODOX is a commercial acronym which stands for Low Dosage X-Ray. LODOX was first developed by a South African company to use in diamond mines in order to combat diamond theft and the medical application was soon realized. Currently there are four LODOX SAT scans being used at forensic services in South Africa, two of them in Cape Town and two in Gauteng and 19 globally. The LODOX stat scan can be applied like a normal conventional x-ray to screen for bullets any sharp objects or radio or park objects can do a full skeletal survey to look for fractures. We can screen for prosthesis, any orthopedic devices, medical devices. We can do full body screens on charred bodies and decomposed remains in order to look for those objects mentioned. For me, LODOX is a great advantage because previously we had to take a lot of time and couldn't scan everybody with the C-arm, which is quite labor intensive. It required at least two assistants, and there's no permanent record of that. It's just an image, but there's no print out or digital record available. Now we can scan each body admitted to the mortuary. It only takes a few seconds, and we have all the information permanently and digitally recorded. The Department of Telecommunications and Postal Services has set aside 200 million rand of its 1.4 billion rand budget this year to kickstart the first phase of the South Africa Connect national broadband strategy. So the question really was, what do we do? The, then the announcement was that let's prioritize broadband rollout to the most vulnerable eight districts, which are really in most of our provinces, except Johannesburg and the Western Cape. That, that's where the poorest of the poor. Hence, broadband rollout is a priority. It's about the bigger picture of inclusion, especially economic inclusion, access to information, and normalizing um, our, uh, our societies. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insight into South Africa's real economy.